Hi there, Agile friends. I'll come in here just with a quick note to let you know that the Agile Online Summit 2022 is coming soon. To know more, check out bit.ly forward slash AOS 2022. That's all one word, all lowercase, bit.ly forward slash AOS 2022. Now, stick around to the end of the episode if you want to know more. But for now, on to the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Wednesday, the leading change episode this week with Bert Hymans. Hey, Bert, welcome back. Hey, Vasco. So, Bert, we're talking about change today, and uh, we we want you to take us on a journey through a story of a change process you were involved with and, Mm -hmm. you know, walk us through the process, how it went from beginning to end. But Mm -hmm. as you go through that, do highlight for us the tools, the tips, the tricks and the techniques you learned back then that you still apply today? The first thing that I'm thinking about is a, a change that I had in a team uh, in Ghent, a city in Belgium, where uh, we had a, a small team, six people. We were doing Scrum. So, and and uh, the process was more or less, and I, I guess this will be familiar for much of the audience, it was more of a development. Okay, there was a to-do backlogs thing, but there was then development, code review, testing, user acceptance tests, and afterwards a release and, and a deployment. So, and if, if things were anywhere in the chain, they when they uh, were tested and, and, and not approved, they went back to a column uh, that says uh, rework, that said rework. So why am I telling you this, uh, this, this value stream? Um, because these were the columns in our, in our scrum board was because the testing column was always very, very long. Very <laughs> busy. Yeah, very busy. So things got stuck in testing and sometimes also in user acceptance testing. And uh, in that during that time, I was learning about uh, work in progress limits and uh, the, the theory of constraints and single piece flow. So the, the lean management aspects uh, that um, had go into the agile philosophy as well. And um, I was working together with a, with, a, with a PM and we came up with the idea of putting a, a whip limit or work in progress limit on the testing column. And the idea was to have everybody just solve testing and make sure that there were not more than 10 items in the testing column. So that's already quite a lot. Uh, for a sprint that took, they were three weeks sprints that took three weeks. So uh, that worked, that worked really, really nice. But it took us three sprints before this took a real effect um, because we we discussed conventions in the team of how we were going to help our tester because the tester was working on two different projects. But every time when a retrospective came by, the, the tester got uh, got a little bit of flack because he was he he wasn't going fast enough, but the developers they had enough time, uh, no yeah, problem. Yeah, they were hands so, up waiting. Yeah, voila. So, so 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 you introduced the idea of whip limits together with the product mm-hmm. owner. That's that's a winner, by the way, because if the yeah. product owner is on board, then it's much easier mm-hmm. to get it through. Uh, I mean, compare this with the product owner being against it. I'm sure that would mm-hmm. have been a lot harder. Yeah. So you got your ally there. Yes. Uh, a, a small but effective coalition of the willing, right? So you mm-hmm. put the whip limits there. How did the team react at first? At at first, it was hard because they knew this was a this was a, a problem, um, and they they said, "Well, okay, we're going to try." So I didn't get the wind in our we didn't get the wind in our face uh, from the first time. They they were they were a, a pretty um, they were not. A really they were receptive, team. yeah. They were receptive, yeah. So I got we got lucky there, and um, and but and then I, even after the whip limits were put in place, they were still uh, being a little bit critical of the tester. Yes, 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 and they also didn't do what they said they were going to do because people are creatures. So what of habit. did they say they were going to do and didn't? Uh, yeah. So uh, the analyst was going to help the testers. The developers, so and and the developers were also going to stop developing, stop working on on development, adding new work to the testing column. The moment that there were ten items in the testing column, that was the convention. So everybody, it 
the, the general philosophy was the moment that we get to 10 testing items in the testing column, we're going to swarm on the testing. That was the idea. But after three weeks, it was like, oh, everybody was having excuses about why they didn't do the testing. And so, but ah, and the other thing that, that helped in creating a good habit was um, going from right to left on the scrum board. What, what do you mean by that? By, from right to left. So what we did every morning during our standup was look at the scrum board and we went from left to right. So we first, we looked at the to-do column, then the development column, then the, the rework column and, and so forth and so forth. And the testing column. Now, what we did was we started looking at the right. So release and deployment, that, that was in, in lockstep with something else. So the, we couldn't ignore that. But then the user acceptance testing, that, that was there. And that also sometimes got pretty big, but well, that was that was another beast entirely because the user acceptance testing required the users to also do stuff. And then there was the testing column. Uh, so we ended up during the dailies starting with the testing column. And we made a joke out of it because people like jokes and like stuff that's lighthearted and, and just making it a running joke, like, ah, oh, the testing column, it's it's at 10 again. <laughs> or it's or, or it's it's at twelve again, so, and then then you so you look around and and you see people. Okay, oh, that's not that, that's not what we wanted to do. <laughs> so someone else said, okay, so how how are we going to solve this? We we said then, okay, let's try to let, let's try to fix this. But we made did it, they? We I made mean, it... because you said that they were coming up with all kinds of excuses. So how did they eventually? Meaning. How did the rest of the team, not just the tester, eventually Repetition. accept to also test so that they would get more stuff through the testing step? Repetition. So it took it took us I took it took us three sprints. The first sprint people forgot. Second sprint, well, of course we mentioned this during the retro. Second second sprint the, after the the convention was made. Second sprint we we still had to remind everyone. Third sprint we had more cooperation the, the the cooperation as a whole was was better and i think we we delivered faster because of it um, no i'm sure i'm, I'm Absolutely. sure I, yeah. and actually this is great because uh very often change processes uh and and especially when it's at the team level they, they don't need to be anything complicated right like mm -hmm. pick somebody in the team who is yes. the ally like the product owner mm -hmm. introduce the idea together with the that ally or in this case the product owner uh, change something in how you look at what you're doing like you guys went from right to left on the board mm -hmm. because that made the testing column even more obvious, right? Voila. And you would start the discussion from where the problem was and and then repeat the idea because obviously people will need to be reminded and nothing works the first time. So mm -hmm. if nothing else, we need to talk about it again so that we make it better. Yep. Uh, and make it very visual. That's that's also what helped. Huh? Uh, going back to it, like you say, first thing in the morning, there's there's no perception without embodiment. That so, is a very deep phrase. Yeah, <laughs> I in in my simplicity, I try to say that you can't manage what you can't see, and if you don't visualize it, you don't see it. Yeah, right. That's, and and but I, I yeah, absolutely. Like it, it, if we can't point at it, it's mm -hmm. going to be very hard to have a conversation about it. Yeah, that that if you're looking at architectural or uh, analysis diagrams, that's that's the reason there are diagrams. They're, they are, they are more pieces of material that help people work together than they are briefing material. Uh, Absolutely. That was a great story. Thank you for sharing that, Bert. Oh, my pleasure. Hi there, Agile friends. Thank you for sticking around to know more about this year's Agile Online Summit. The summit will have four keynotes and four tracks you will not want to miss. The keynotes will touch on critical topics for us from delivering on time to helping you to focus on sustainability. The four tracks are tools, so we'll focus on tools you need to excel at your job, but also your mission. We'll also have a track on sustainability, which is, of course, about people and their sustainable pace, but it's also about how do we bring sustainability to the products and the planet we inhabit. We'll have a third track about happiness, talking about doing what we love and most crucially, loving what we do. 
And finally, the fourth track will be live. It will be mostly hands-on sessions to help you roll up your sleeves together with the presenters. Oh, and we will also have a coaching clinic, as we usually do, organized to help you discuss and get inspired to solve the hardest challenges you face at work. This year, we'll have a special emphasis on interaction with your peers, so get your ticket and join the Slack at bit.ly forward slash AOS 2022. As always, we have free tickets for anyone that wants to attend live and the VIP tickets for those of you who want to keep the videos forever. So check them out at bit.ly forward slash AOS 2022. I'll see you on the conference floor. Leading change is one of the core skills we must acquire, but it is only one of the steps towards our success as Scrum Masters. Tomorrow, on Success Thursday, we will talk about how to define success for the Scrum Master role, we'll cover tips on how to measure your way to that position, and most importantly, how to develop that focus on continuous improvement that is as important for Scrum Masters as it is for teams. See you tomorrow! We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.